Hi, Thomas. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thanks. Um, was it easier for you to get into character in some ways in the booth when you're doing an accent? Because I always imagine when you're kind of playing a character in a, in a in a film like this, when you kind of put up an accent, it must make it more like you're turning into someone else in that booth as opposed to kind of just because I guess without the kind of costumes and being on a set, it can be harder to suspend that disbelief. So did you think having the accent helped in this instance? Yes, perhaps. Uh, I mean, you're just kind of trying to find the character. I mean, we, we tried English and we tried American and we tried high pitch, we tried low pitch, we tried around until we were kind of happy with the sound of this dragon. Um, and it is a little bit hard because it's not animated at the time either. So you're just looking at little sketches to get an idea of how things, and nothing moves, they're just individual sketches. Um, so it's only later when you come back and you do little bits of additional recording that you get to see, you get to see what it's going to look like, and how they've animated to your face because they actually also filmed um, us recording so that they could uh, so it helped the animators um, animate um, certain facial expressions and things from us. Um, so yeah, no, I think it does help a little bit. Um, but of course, I was also doing in England. It, I mean, if you're doing an American accent, it helps to do it in America, surrounded by Americans. And, you know, even when you go home at the end of the day. You go to a bar or a restaurant or whatever, and you're hearing that accent a lot. Um, but on this, you you bang it out. I mean, we banged it out in maybe two or three days. So once you get in the swing of things, it just kind of becomes a habit. So I watched Dragon Rider today. It's really good fun, and it's got I mean, it's got an incredible cast. I mean, obviously, you're just one of so many talents: Patrick Stewart, Felicity Jones. Is it is working on something like this really as isolating as they say it is? Did you get to spend time with these incredible other sort of colleagues of yours in this movie, or, or is is that just not the case? And it's very much about just a sort of lonely experience in the booth. It is rather, um, yeah. You don't um, you don't see each other or communicate or interact whatsoever. It's a bit, bit of a shame. Um, it depends on the piece, really. I've done some stuff where you do have um, a couple of people in there. Uh, it's, that's just a little bit harder to track, track people down, have multiple mic setups, and it's a bit harder to record. But it, I think it's better to do it like that way. It's more fun too. But no, unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't get to meet anybody from the from the cast at all. In fact, I think I was one of the first to record, so I didn't even have their playback in my ears. I had um, someone else doing their lines. So unfortunately, no. Is it, is it quite strange then in some ways that you're, you share this experience with them? I mean, I could, I could feasibly be speaking to you and then Felicity Jones in the same day, both promoting the same movie. And yet you, you're kind of, you kind of got this shared thing that you're both pre representing and yet you kind of haven't shared it together, if that makes sense. Yeah, it is a bit weird. It is a bit strange. And it's a bit of a shame, really. Um, but it, yeah, that's just how it is, I suppose. And here's a big, broad question, but why do we love dragons so much? Because they are just one of those sort of, uh, particularly in kind of children's and fantasy kind of movies, they're one of the, the staple kind of characters, aren't they? And kind of like, it's, it's something about dragons that we just can't seem to shake in our, in animation. Yeah, I know, it's funny, isn't it? Um, yeah, they, get, they, they run through so many ancient old stories, don't they? Um, and they're kind of like dinosaurs in some ways, which did really exist and have fossil records. And, but these things don't. Um, and they're obsessed with gold, um, and they breathe fire, um, and they're wise, they're intelligent. Um, I don't really know why it is. Um, they're big, powerful animals. I don't know. I don't know. They're just, they're just naturally quite interesting, aren't they? I mean, all of those qualities are just quite interesting things anyway. So what was the initial attraction for you to, to getting involved in this project and to play this character in this movie? Um, well, the idea of playing a dragon. Um, <laughs> was one of them. Um, I thought that'd be a lovely thing to do. I'd love to play a dragon. Um, and uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> a, 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 yeah, there's a story that um, is about friendship and um, believing in yourself and courage to overcome differences between one another and, um, and talking a little bit about deforestation and the impact that human beings are having on the planet, but without it being too kind of dark um, I just thought it was quite sweet um, and I, I quite liked it. It's quite a simple, sweet story that travels the world. Yeah. So tell me about uh, Unsinkable. Is that, that's, is that another, that's another audio thing, isn't it? Because I, yeah. I, I was thinking a bit about it earlier. It sounds really fascinating. Yeah, I mean, that was, um, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's just an amazing story that I didn't know anything about at all. And I like to think I'm quite well versed on brilliant World War II stories. Um, but 
Yeah, no, this is just a fantastic story about this crew and this particular ship and this particular crossing across the Atlantic um, that were attacked by uh, wolf packs and submarine U boats and uh, battleships and things by the, the Nazis. Um, and it just, um, uh, it was just something that I thought was a great story that deserved to be told. And the way in which they were going about doing it, I thought was interesting. I'd never really um, been a part of anything that was that like all only audio, but kind of on that scale. Um, I'm, I'm actually really intrigued to see how it all sounds. Cause I, again, I just went in on my own, nobody else to read. They were, I mean, no one was even reading opposite me. So I just literally went through my lines individually. Um, I can't wait to see how that kind of all comes together properly. And the, the cast they got together was great. And, um uh, the writer was in the merchant navy so you know he he knows he knows his stuff when it comes to the navy and um all, all the terminology and uh, it was it was fascinating very fascinating so, so last time i um i interviewed you was for the queen's gambit and obviously we i interviewed you it was like the week before release so i knew it was really good because i'd seen it and you knew it was really good because you've been in it but i it's been a kind of phenomenon hasn't it i mean have you almost despite knowing and how good it is and how proud you are of of it was did that still come as a surprise to you to see just how wide it traveled i mean it was watched by millions wasn't it across the world no no absolutely i was not expecting that at all i don't think anyone was um that, well that wasn't the plan but i think everyone was happy that that how it turned out um I, I mean i don't know why um i mean it was great it's, it's a good piece it's done really really well and um a lot of effort was put in by a lot of people um a lot of time and effort really um it's always nice to see that gratified with some success and um to have people think that we did a good job i was expecting it to be you know successful but within a kind of quite small realm uh, small crowd really um, but the fact that it's transcended that and um, it, it shows that people really can tap into that I'm, I'm just uh, surprised and happy really it's, it's great yeah well things uh, do this well generally we want more do you want more I know <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I know I know uh, no I mean I have, the story's finished I'm afraid <laughs> that's it um, I don't think there's any plans to do any more um, it's the end of the book too um, and it's, I think that's the kind of perfect end for for the character of Beth too. I mean, I don't know what else you'd really you'd really do. No. Uh, but I mean, I, I would love to. It's a great character, great set, great crew, great people, great cast. Obviously, I'd love to do it again, but um, I, I don't think that will happen. No. <laughs> well, thanks so much for your time today, Thomas. Again, and I'll hopefully I'll speak to you again soon. Yeah, lovely. Okay, thanks man. Very much. Cheers. Cheers, man. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Yeah.